What a gift. I want to thank our guest instrumentalists this morning, Melissa and Jackson, who are friends of Adams from college. Of all the days to come and join us, we, I, I, that really speaks to my soul. It's like the new world. It's possible. Thank you. So in the spirit of that beautiful music from Dvorak, let us just take in a deep breath and breathe out whatever it is you need to let go of in order to be here. Mothering spirit who labors to birth all things new, including each one of us and this community of faith. You labor us into birth for this time and place. Center us, empty us, open us, fill us with your dreams and visions for our lives and for this world. Amen. So look around. Um, I want to welcome everyone, including our guests this morning. It's the faithful remnant on Memorial Day weekend um, and the season of graduation and people recovering from it. So remember, no matter who you are, where you are in life's journey, really, you are welcome here. What's up? Oh, and Zoom, Zoomers, let's all... You can stand up, turn around, and wave hi. They can't see you over here, but they can see you when you're there. Welcome, everybody on Zoom. Welcome. Let's give each other all a sign of that peace. Peace. So continuing in our tradition of having announcements at the beginning of the meeting of the of worship, um, this Sunday, after worship, those of you who can join us, um, we're having some delicious fruit salad and yogurt, and um, Jim and I are hosting, and we're also going to continue in those Pentecost questions of who we're called to become by the Spirit. Next Sunday, we're officially celebrating graduates, so if you have a graduate, it's next Sunday, even though we're going to be talking a little bit about graduation this Sunday too, next Sunday, June 2nd. So if you have someone you know or love um, who's graduating at any level, any stage, I mean, we can look at graduating into retirement in this community, um, let us know. The um, third announcement it's stewardship season. We might extend it a little bit longer. I want to thank everyone for their generosity and support and the many gifts that we have of talents and time and treasures. And um, like many churches, we're facing some serious challenges and the council still working through some of those details. So <clears throat> we encourage you to carefully consider how you give of yourself, whether it's time or talent or treasure. We have time for, oh, there's um, pledge forms on the last page of your bulletins. And there's also, um, there you can fold them and then they'll be picked up um, by Sheila. We have time for one more brief announcement. Mike. <clears throat> Um, next at 7.30 we're doing a concert and you're welcome it's at Kaufman Auditorium which is the front part of the of the old Alameda High School down down the road a little bit from the, the theater um, and I'm going to start things off with some Star Wars music it's the marches from Star Wars uh, and then we're doing a lot of other things but you're you're all welcome to come at seven thirty.
Yeah. Right. Mike, do you have that electronically? Or we can just give give me a copy and we can scan it. Okay, great. Thank you. Other okay. All right, then please rise as you're able for our responsive call to worship that's printed in your bulletins. Turn this on. There you go. go. Good morning, everybody. Morning. <laughs> okay. Um, even in the midst of sorrow and violence, the Spirit of the Lord calls us together to be prophets to the, of hope, architects of peace through revolutionary love. Let us worship the God who labors to birth a new reality. Life is fiercely protected, and all people are fresh. Oh, I'm gonna lay down my burdens down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Down by the riverside, I'm gonna lay down my burdens. Down by the riverside, study war no more. I'm going to study war no more. I'm going to study war no more. Study war no more. I'm going to study war no more. I'm going to study war no more. Study war no more. Lay down my sword and shield. I'm going to lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I'm going to lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside, study war no more. I'm going to study war no more. I'll study war no more. I'll study war no more. I'm going to study war no more. I will study war no more. Study. Thank you, Adam. So please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess our complicity in the cycles of violence and injustice that plague our world. Our commitment to peace has been inconsistent, our courage lacking. Forgive us for the times we have chosen the path of complacency over prophetic action, acclimating to the brokenness around us. Rekindle in us your spirit of holy persistence and faith that a more beautiful world is possible. Renew our resolve as stewards and co-creators of your beloved community. I have serious news to pass on to everybody. What I'm about to say could mean the world's disaster, could change your joy and laughter to tears and pain. It's that love's in need of love today. Don't delay, 
send yours in right away. Oh, and hate's gone round, breaking many hearts. So stop it, please, before it goes too far. Ah, of evil plans to make you its possession and it will if we let it destroy everybody we all must take precautionary measures if love and peace you treasure, then hear me when I say, it's that love's in need of love today. So don't delay, send yours right away. Breaking many hearts. Stop it, please, before it goes too far. Oh, it's that love in need of love today. Don't delay. Send yours and run. Yesterday. <laughs> so our reading for this morning is from the Gospel according to Matthew, and it appears early in Jesus's ministry, and it's the Sermon on the Plain, and it's Jesus is speaking about these ways of being. You have heard it said, but I say to you. And it's basically raising the bar for how we are called to be in this world. Um, and so hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 through 48, from Eugene Peterson's The Message. And Jesus said to them, here's another old saying that deserves a second look, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Is that going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose. Don't hit that at all. If someone strikes you, stand there and take it. If someone drags you into court and sues for the shirt off your back, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. And if someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. And Jesus continued, you're familiar with the old written law, love your friend and its unwritten companion, hate your enemy. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, 
respond with the supple moves of prayer. For then you are working out of your true selves, your God-created selves. This is what God does. God gives us the best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless, the good and bad, the nice and nasty. If all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. In a word, what I'm saying is, grow up. Your kingdom, queendom subjects, now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others the way God lives toward you. And then the second reading, I'm not going to read for the sake of time, but it's a beautiful um, piece, a, a poem actually that was written March 22nd, 1970. It was presented, um, the dedication of this sanctuary. And it speaks about who we're called to become. So sometime during the day today, take a look at it. And now let us meditate on these words in the sanctuary of our hearts and minds. Please pray with me. Come Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts and kindle us all in the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit that we may all be renewed. And together through you, we shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. I had a different sermon planned and with the events of this week, I modified. So here we go. It was a joyous celebration of achievement, the culmination of years of hard work, perseverance, and pursuing an education as a path toward greater opportunity. Skyline High School's class of 2024 graduation ceremony last Thursday was a day filled with cheers, optimism about the future, and flashes of cameras capturing precious eternal moments. And inspired by Adam, our music director's suggestion and coordinating with the preschool to ensure safety during pickup time, we opened the parking lot for graduation parking. We put up signage, guided cars, even drove a few families in need all the way to graduation. We met so many wonderful people and all of them thanked us for this simple act of kindness. It was good stewardship of God's land and resources. And the next time we'll be sure to add free parking to our congratulations graduates banner so we don't have to run up and down Skyline Boulevard corralling people into the parking lot to get here. I so appreciate Adam's suggestion and the volunteers who helped to make this happen. And guess what? It was fun and inspiring. We have stories. And while we were busy guiding cars, we even heard Adam Green's voice through the loudspeaker. Yes, he was the graduation keynote speaker. And then it happened at 7.45 p.m. after the ceremony had ended. Those beautiful scenes were tainted by gunfire. Were you there? Did you read about it? Just take a moment to just breathe. So I'm ambivalent. We can't allow this beautiful moment, this 
powerful experience to become just another gun violence statistic, overshadowing all of the power and beauty and light and kindness and love and hope and community, these graduates and the ceremony and body. And on the other hand, we can't allow this kind of gun violence to become normalized. We can't allow ourselves to become used to this level of violence in our society. Maybe we've all gotten kind of numb to it. I don't want to be numb. I think the shooting lays bare the injustice that still plagues our society. This horrific truth that even sacred rites of passage like graduation are not spared from the assault of violence on human lives. We're reminded about how much more work remains to cultivate beloved community. A peace that the spiritual sages and the freedom writers from all traditions have given their very lives laboring for. I think this shooting struck at the heart of what communities a faith like ours exist for. At our best, I think, we strive to embody the liberating spirit that the prophet Joel foresaw when God's renewal spreads across all people, not just some, igniting the young and the old alike as prophets of a new reality of equality and reconciliation and kindness and the end to violence building bridges among us, not walls between us. Reverend Morrow, the former associate pastor at Hillcrest Congregational Church, where I also coincidentally served before I came here, captured this expansive generative spirit in his poem, dedicating this very church in 1970. He writes, a place of life with power to pluck the energies of God and all people and bounce them out again. I think it's this moral imagination, blazing paths to human thriving that the world so desperately needs. Skyline High's faculty and graduating seniors, I think the vast majority live out the spirit and the spirit was embodied in the speeches that we heard over the PA system and then saw on videos championing empathy, anti-racism, and compassion for all people. The valedictorian spoke stirringly on the need to embrace multifaceted identities while working for Palestinian human rights, a message of introspection and solidarity with the oppressed. Skyline's music director, that's right, Mr. Adam Green, poured out his soul in a commencement address lifting up perseverance through the power of kindness, basic human kindness and grace. These were not just words, but sacred columns to be architects of a new and more just reality built on the transforming power of love, kindness, and truth force. And while the joyful noise of these accomplishments was muted, I believe that the evergreen hopes they represented cannot be easily extinguished. As the great mystic Rumi wrote in every breath, if you strip naked, just like winter, the joy of spring will grow from within. Let us not allow the chill of this present sorrow, of our own personal sorrows, of our collective sorrows, Pardon us or diminish our faith in the coming of a new season. Instead, I want to challenge us to choose the riskier path of courageous, nonviolent resistance and creation. I want to challenge us to stretch every spiritual muscle and material God-given resource we steward to keep planting and nurturing and tending the blossom of God's more beautiful world. I want us to honor the examples of Dr. King, Dorothy Day, Thich Nhat Hanh, and all those who've actually 
actively opposed injustice through prophetic action rooted in revolutionary love. Let's together embody that truth, that sacred truth, that no life is cheaper than any other life, that the daily assault of violence is an existential moral crisis demanding an urgent turning from the ancient cycles of violent retaliation. Let us embody the truth that there is a third way beyond oppressive forces of the status quo and reactive descent into bitterness, division, and hatred. On this day, let us rededicate ourselves as a community of faith to being radicals for the flourishing of every human life through soul force, to demand real change and laws that prioritize the sanctity of those most vulnerable over corporate greed and militarism, to proclaim not only in our words, but especially in our actions, that we can't wait any longer for the world we've dreamed of, where the spears are finally beaten down into pruning hooks and swords into plowshares. And let us pledge to become more externally focused as a congregation in responding to the needs of the wider community with joy and imagination and planning. And yes, sometimes even serving as parking attendants for a high school graduation, building bridges, not walls, offering a place of belonging and doing so humbly and joyfully. So let's double down on our commitment to providing sanctuary, education, empowerment, waging resilient justice for those whose lives are threatened or futures curtailed by oppression. Let's stretch our budgets and our bodies to create beautiful spaces of belonging here. Let's welcome and lift up young and old into the streets and halls of power, not with weapons of violence, but with truth force, civil disobedience if needed, kindness, and the willingness to sacrifice our own privilege and comforts to awaken the slumbering conscious of this wider community because the stakes are far too high to stay mired in patterns of complicity and complacency. Us versus them thinking and empty ideological loyalties that have brought such horrific division and violence. This is a time to discern all of our gifts, our finances, solidarity, spaces, and our moral imagination in service of this third way of transforming love, not just to get by, but to cultivate an ecosystem that is fertile with the dreams of these brave high school graduates and all who work for true peace rooted in justice. So let's rise up, wipe off the dust, wipe off the tears and get back to the work of soul force. Our prophetic graduates and elders have plotted the coordinates for this journey now it is time for each of us to discern our roles to steward this vision into reality through our resources, courage, kindness, and hope. And may we do so joyfully to bring forth a more just and peace and liberated world that our hearts know is possible. And in doing so, we honor the lives of all those past, present, and especially future by ushering in their wildest dreams for this community, for this world, step by step, soul by soul, vote by vote, until at last the beloved community is born anew. Mm -hmm.
you so much. And so we now come to the time in our service when we bring to mind our prayers. If you on Zoom this morning um, would like to share your prayers, just raise your hand and we can unmute you. And I'll pass around a mic. What? Oh, Car Carolyn will pass around a mic. Thank you. Um, so on this Memorial Day weekend, we're reminded of great sacrifices throughout history to secure the blessings of liberty and justice and human dignity. And so let us take a moment to pause to honor those who gave their lives so that others might experience renewal and rebirth and a chance to flourish. And let us also repent unjust wars and our country's long role in oppression and violence. Are there other prayers for the world this weekend? I wanted to let you know, speaking of prayers, um, our conference is praying for Skyline High School. So let us bring to mind those within our community in need of prayers. We um, continue to lift up our prayers for Dave Byron's and Paula, um, Dave's ongoing challenges and complications with infection, and he's at home. And um, Olivia also, um, Pegram is continuing with her treatments for lymphoma. Um, if either of you would like to share anything this morning, um, ongoing prayers for Michael's nephew, Rico, who has some serious health concerns. Any updates, Catherine? No? Okay. All right. And um, Reverend Reaney had a wonderful retirement right. celebration. She had been our minister in training, and she sends her best to us. Um, and just a reminder to keep her in your prayers. She's quite ill. And for all of our graduates and teachers living in a time like this, um, where um, it's such an existential time in this world and existential time in the lives of young people, thinking about vocation and meaning and purpose and future. And so, um, let us just surround them all with our love and support. And that continues all the way to the preschool. It, ha it begins there on the playgrounds. Let us pray for an end to wars and violence. And the end of this senseless cycle of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. There must be another way. There's a deer in this. There's a deer. The baby bug. The baby. He wanted to come in. He heard all this peace and he wants to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He likes he's he wants to ring the bell rod, go help him out. <laughs> it was a sign. Yeah. Peace and harmony and connection. There was he was a little buck. He had little antlers. It was very cute. Um and uh gratitudes. Today's Josh Manley's 21st birthday. Yeah, of course, Katie. Let's get her a mic. Um I just want to say this week has been a very emotional in many different levels. Um, we had extreme joy and then horror and, and deep sadness. And today we're trying to keep the joy in our hearts because today is Josh's 21st birthday. And because we didn't quite, we actually got to have a lovely little breakfast with Josh 
for his birthday. So that was lovely. But I also wanted to just um, lift up a call to action for this community. People have talked about this church wanting to support Skyline High School and um, the PTSA in response to what happened is putting just put out a call to action to all of our community to um, join the PTSA in, in collaborating with the school administration and school groups. And we don't have the answers, but we feel that it is imperative that we support helping make our community safer. It's not just Skyline. This is not something that happened because of anything that's indicative to Skyline High School. It's what's going, our systemic issues with our society. And so we have to all strive to make that change and prayers are great, but we really need action. So um, I invite this community to be a part of that. I don't know what it's gonna look like. We are being very clear on the PTSA. We don't have the answers. We're a predominantly white group. So we um, certainly don't have the answers, but we want a partnership with people who maybe do. And so that we never have to live through these horrors again. And I think the first one is to help get out the vote. That's something that all of us are already committed with. And we need to do that more actively, especially with the youth at Skyline because they, um, you know, they're, the 18 year olds and the you know Gen Z have a lower population of voting, lower mm -hmm. numbers. So we they're the ones that can hopefully make different changes. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to put that call to action out to all of you and um, I'm gonna be doing what I can as well. Thank Katie, you. Are you? Um, and also if if it would be of value for um, for the community to um, have a vigil. I mean, how many gun violence vigils have we had or building community and it's like, we could we could do that. So let's partner together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. Wow. So wow. it's very close, but it also has nothing to do with the experience. And so I don't I don't know what they're called. I'm glad that people can do what hurts, but they're gonna be okay. Yes. We need action. We need Um, this is great. Okay, it's it's still like this is sort of pr it's prayer and action. Okay, no, that's good. <laughs> Don't be sorry. I, Don't I, be sorry. I've been to my fair share of graduations, and I've heard more than my fair share of graduation speeches. There's only so much that you can do with a graduation speech, but Adam, that was amazing. That was refreshing and and vibrant and full of joy and hope and passion and love. And it uh, it brought tears to my eyes and I know it did for a lot of the graduates as well. So thank you so much for making that uh, a special, joyous occasion. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Take it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a calling. It's a calling. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, follow up to what Katie was saying. And um, um, this is the uh, PTSA, the, the uh, parent uh, teachers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, um, I think that could be an opportunity because um, Skyline, it, it will be going some kind of transition. I think that's um, kind of clear in uh, um, how membership is going to be sustained and what the meaning of being a member is going to be and uh, you know where the church is going, right? And the one thing is that uh, 
it's a neighbor to the high school. And at this moment, it seems that um, there is some interest and some thirst uh, from, from this association to try to have a dialogue. It sounds to me that uh, what they're looking for is some kind of communication, some kind of forum or something from which to get inspiration, from uh, which to discuss, uh, well, what is this call to action? Or uh, if it's going to be, again, uh, get out the vote. OK, but what does that mean more explicitly in terms of uh, Gen Z and uh, um, in terms of uh, uh, specific uh, uh, issues and, and votes and all of those things? So at the same time, it would be fantastic if the church were to attract uh, younger people. So this could be an opportunity to start uh, a dialogue with the high school. And maybe there could be some members of this community that could get together with some members of the high school and discuss uh, uh, what happened or discuss what's important to them, uh, what's important to okay. us. And we can, just we can to continue, uh, we can continue after. Yeah, those just are to, great ideas. Thanks. Just for, to, you can connect with Kate. Yeah, just to yeah. Uh, just just to suggest that this would be an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for lifting it up, Katie. Thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. Thanks. Other prayers. We're back to prayers. Here. 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just, um, there are just so many needs in our world and in our community and in our church. And um, um, we just, uh, I just pray that um, uh, love can, <laughs> love can triumph and yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Ah, so let's just take a moment to bring to mind all of these prayers and prayers too deep for words, including prayers for ourselves. God of life and love and hope in recreation. We ask that you would be with all these people in your life-giving ways, all those named and all those known to you in our hearts. Heal all of these people in body and mind and spirit. Fill them with healing. Surround them with love. And we pray too for ourselves. And we ask this in your many names and through Jesus. Amen. Let's join together. Let's reach out. Connect. Join together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Oh, we did. Do you have another gratitude? Go ahead. Say say gratitude. Go ahead. Yeah. Here, here, Catherine, here. I was cold out, huh? <laughs> Actually, it was um, not too bad because oh, good it's protected down there. Oh, but nice. um, Carolyn and um, Arash and Nancy and I and Michael nice. um, tweeted and had a lot of great conversations. It's a really a social event. So Next time and I had wine too. Wine. <laughs> we had more weed than wine. More weed. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's legal. <laughs> Someone besides me, lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Yvonne, you want to say it in Spanish? <laughs> if you can remember, no. <laughs> our father. <laughs> our mother, father. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Amen. And um, so we'll now receive this morning's offering in addition to the regular offering on the very last page of your bulletin if you want to fill out a pledge form or if you have other questions you can talk with our co-moderators Catherine and Nancy or you can talk with um, our treasurer Karen um, and we'll now hear this morning's I see you in the lonely place. How can you be so blind? You're still regretting the love you left, left behind. Oh, I see you go through the change. Um, we had one more contribution from the Zoomers. Becky Taylor said, congratulations to the um, newest members of Skyline. It's like we've been dating for 10 years or 15 or whatever. Finally put a ring on it. <laughs> Hopefully Becky will be visiting again soon. All right then. Um, Gracious God, we thank you for all of these gifts. 
and above all, the gift of our lives. Remind us again and again of our vocation to love. Fill us with courage. Remind us of what our strengths and our vulnerabilities are. And encourage us to go it together. Amen. And so now we'll hear our closing piece. Is this the postlude? Um, nope, this is okay. our closing right. number. Okay. It's called your Skyline Song right. book number 11. Let there be peace. Oh, God, please. Let there be peace on earth. <laughs> Let the peace and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our Father. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let us be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I want to um, invite one more big thank you to our guest instrumentalists this morning, Jackson and Melissa. <laughs> and as always, to our music director and accompanist, Adam and Rob. And to each, each one of you. So you're all invited. We've got some really yummy food. And we probably have too much. I kind of went crazy with fruit salad. So take some home with you if you, if you just need to leave. And we're also going to continue on in this um, Pentecost conversation. And the question for today is, how can a small aging UCC congregation in the Oakland Hills embody a more radically inclusive egalitarian spirit of Pentecost? So come and join us for some fruit salad and quinoa chips and yogurt. And um, hear these words now of benediction. Go now as Pentecost people, dreamers of God's dream for the beloved community, for the human family, for all people, gathered as one in justice, equality, and love. And may the breath, wind, and fire, the love of God's unity and hope within and among all people be with us. Go forth in peace. Amen. No, it starts at one. I'm so glad. Yeah, like, it's a little stressful planning it because of the preschool. I discovered that the preschool kids run around the parking lot. And oh, that was cool. So, how do we let children run in parking lots on a table? Yeah, that's another uh, that's discussion. Yes. <laughs>